I was looking at it from verse 5. And the heavens shall praise thy wonders, O Lord, thy faithfulness also in the congregation of the saints. For who is in heaven, who in heaven can be compared unto the Lord? Who among the sons of the mighty can be likened unto the Lord? And that's what eventually the Padiza confessed himself said, There is no other God that can deliver after their search. Why did he say that? How did he come to that? How did he get such a revelation? A notable miracle of deliverance had been wrought by the God of heaven. Nebuchadnezzar and his princes and the governors and the captains and the king's counselors examined Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego. What did they see? They saw that these men upon uh, these men were men upon whose bodies the fire had no power. Nor was any ear of their head seen, neither were their coats changed, and neither the smell of fire had passed upon them. Because of that, they could not deny that miracle. So Nebuchadnezzar, he spoke and he said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who has sent his angel and delivered the servants that trusted in him. If you trust the Lord, that's how He's going to deliver you. If you have confidence in the Lord, that is how the Lord is going to deliver you. And if you put your confidence in God, your faith in God, and you say, I have no other God but the God of heaven. I bow to no other God but the God of heaven. I worship no other God but the God of heaven. I submit, surrender to no other God but the God of heaven. That is how God has to put your confidence and your faith, your trust in Him. That's how He will deliver you. And then the kings of this world and the princes of this world will be able to testify on your behalf that there is no other God that can deliver. After they saw it, they confess, and the people who see you know you too, they'll confess that same thing in Jesus' name. No one in heaven, no one on earth can be compared with the Almighty God. No one can rival him, neither among the greatest kings on earth, nor among the highest angels in heaven. As we are talking about this true God, he is incomparable in every way. He is incomparable in his being, incomparable in his existence. Number one, in his attributes and perfections. There is none like God. Look at all the attributes of God, all the characteristics of God, all the, all the natural things that we see about God. There is nobody to be compared with Him. Number two, in His holiness and power. This God is holy. This God is mighty. And this God is powerful. Number three, in His knowledge and wisdom. Who will have the same knowledge as the Almighty God has? Or the same wisdom as the Almighty God has? Number four, in his love and in his goodness. See his love for Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And see his goodness over Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Which God has ever done something like that before? And then, number five, in his truth and justice. is truthful and is faithful. He is the great covenant keeper, the God of heaven. Number six, in his providence and redemption. Number seven, in his glory and majesty. As you look at this God and you study about him, and then you see the actions of this God, the manifestation of his glory and majesty, you will see that there is no comparison with this God at all. Our God has no equals among the gods of the Chaldeans. He has no equal, no rival among the gods of the Canaanites. He has no equal, no rival, no parallel among the gods of the nations. He has no rival. God's excellence and supremacy is so high as the heavens are above the earth. None of the gods of the nations are capable of doing that for their worshippers, which the God of heaven has done for his own. The gods of the heathen were but lately invented and will shortly perish. The gods of the heathen, were they not created, were they not made, were they not fashioned by men who just came up yesterday? Those gods were lately created and they were lately made and then they are going to shortly perish, get out of sight. But the eternal God is of boundless eternity and shall abide forever and ever. There is none like our God. 
I said there is none like our God. It's, God. it's without parallel, without tribal, base, God like no other in the whole universe. It's eternal. It's unchangeable. It's omnipotent. It's omniscient. And is omnipresent. Let's look at some 89 now. Some 89. I'm reading from verse 5. And the heaven shall praise thy wonders, O Lord. Thy faithfulness also in the congregation of the saints. In verse 6, for who in the heaven it can be can be compared unto the Lord, who among the sons of the mighty can be likened unto the Lord. God is greatly to be feared in the assembly of the saints, and to be added in reverence of all them that are around about that are about him. O Lord God of hosts, who is strong, who is a strong Lord, like unto thee, or to the to thy faithfulness round about thee, thou rulest the raging of the sea, when the waves thereof arise, thou stillest them. You will see here that the psalmist had known about the majesty of God, about the glory of God, about the power of God, about the exalted place, exalted position of this almighty God. And he gives voice to that, that the rest of us reading, learning, will also know that this God has no comparison. In fact, there's a song that the children of Israel sang when he came out of the Red Sea because they saw the marvelous wonders of the Lord. We're looking at Exodus chapter 15. Exodus chapter 15, in verse 9, all through to verse 11. Exodus 15, verse 9. The enemy said, I will pursue, I will overtake, I will divide the spoil. My loss shall be satisfied upon them. I will draw my sword, my hand shall destroy them. That's how the enemy bragged. That's what the enemy thought they were going to do when they were pursuing the children of Israel. But then God was on their side. And God is on our side. And when God is on your side, the enemies are going to be put to shame. And the idols of the world, of the people of the world, they are going to be brought to nothing. And that's exactly what God did for the children of Israel. Because they trusted in God. They had faith in God. And they put their allegiance and worship unto the Almighty God alone. In verse 10 it says, Thou didst blow with thy wings, and the sea covered them, the sank as led in the mighty waters. Now verse 11, Who is like unto thee, O Lord? No comparison, no parallel, no rival. Who is like unto thee, O Lord, among the gods? Who is like thee, glorious in holiness, fearful in praises, doing wonders? I pray that those wonders of the Lord will be realized in your life. Deuteronomy chapter 33. Deuteronomy chapter 33. Every part of the Bible uh, agree to the fact that there is no comparison with the Almighty God. He is the incomparable God. He lives in heaven and then he manifests his power here on earth. In Deuteronomy chapter 33. Anytime you get into trouble, remember how great or big our God is. Anytime you have a challenge, remember how great or big our God is. Anytime the people of the world, the idol worshippers, worshipping the gods of the heathen. Anytime they challenge you, remember you are not like them. Our God is not like their God. Our rock is not like their rock. We depend on the almighty eternal God. And that almighty eternal God, he is our refuge and is going to keep us safe and sound. And is going to keep us protected all our lives in Jesus' name. In the day, in the night, there is nothing to fear. Because we serve a God that has no comparison to all the gods of this world. Deuteronomy chapter 33, I'm reading from verse 26. Deuteronomy chapter 33. Verse 26, there is none like unto the God of Jeshurun, who rideth upon the heaven in the hell, and in this excellency on the sky, the eternal God is the refuge. I thought you would say, Amen. Amen. What's a refuge? The refuge is shelter. A refuge is a place you enter in, and then the enemy chasing you, they will not find you. Satan running after you will not be able to touch you. 
In fact, you get into that refuge, it says, The righteous, the name of the Lord is a mighty tower, and the righteous runneth into it, and he is saved. You are safe and secured in the refuge of the Lord in Jesus' name. There is none like him. There's no, there's no one as powerful as him, as mighty as him, as exalted as him, as a wonder-walking God like him, no other one like him. In verse 27, the eternal God is a refuge, and underneath are the everlasting arms, and he shall thrust out the enemy from before thee, and shall say, destroy them. The Lord will be with you. In verse 28, Israel then shall dwell in safety alone. The fountain of Jacob shall be upon a land of corn and wine. And also his heaven shall drop down dew. Happy art thou, O Israel, who is like unto thee, a people saved by the Lord, the shield of thy help. And then it says, and who is the sword of thy excellency? Thine enemy shall be found liars unto thee. Yeah. And thou shalt tread upon their high places. Yeah. When you remove your heart away from the gods of this world, and you say, there will be no idol, and there will be no image that I'm going to be touching or bound down or trusting, I'm going to trust only in the Lord. You're not even going to trust in their oil. Some people carry bottles of oil about. That's another God for them. You're not going to trust in their water. Some people carry some bottles of water about. That is their God. You're not going to trust in their candle. Some people trust in candles. They do not trust in the light of the Word of God. Our God is enough to trust. And we trust our God. And we're not going to trust any idol, any oil, any water, any candle, any name of any angel. Our God is in heaven. He's the creator of the heavens and the earth. And we're going to trust him and trust him alone. And he is able to deliver. He will deliver us in Jesus' name. As you look at Second Samuel chapter 7. Second Samuel chapter 7, I'm reading from verse 22. Second Samuel chapter 7. We're reading from verse 22. Again, it's still reminding us that there's no comparison to our God. Our God is so great. Our God is so high. Our God is so mighty. Our God is so powerful. There is no comparison at all with this great God of heaven. Second Samuel chapter 7 verse 22. Wherefore thou art great, O Lord God, for there is none like thee. Always remember that. Every believer in the Bible, have you seen that from Exodus to Deuteronomy to Second Samuel to other parts of the Bible? Everybody chorusing each out in unity. There is no God like our God. If they are singing and shouting it, you also ought to believe it that there is no God like our God. I said, no God like our God. It says in verse 22, Wherefore thou art great, O Lord God, for there is none like thee, neither is there any God beside thee, according to all that we have heard with our ears. And what one nation in the earth is like thy people, even like Israel, whom God went to redeem for a people to himself, and to make him a name, and to do for, to do for you great things and terrible. For thy hand before thy people, which thou hast redeemed, to thee from Egypt and from the nations and their gods. For thou hast confirmed to thyself thy people Israel, to be a people unto thee forever. And thou, Lord, hast become their God. And now, O Lord God, the word that thou hast spoken concerning thy servant. David is saying, God, I know you are a faithful God. I know you are a truthful God. I know you are a covenant-keeping God. I know you are a mighty God. I know you are a powerful God. I know there is no other God like you. We have heard with our ears. We have seen with our with her eyes, and we felt each in our bosom, within our heart, how great, how mighty you are. And now, God, I hear the promise you have given me, and you have spoken some great, wonderful things concerning me. Do as thou hast said. That's how to pray. In verse 25, and now, O Lord God, 
the word that thou hast spoken concerning thy servant and concerning his house to establish it forever and do as thou hast said. Can we say that together? Do as thou hast said. Can you say that again? The idol worship class cannot say that to the idols because those idols, they have eyes they cannot see. They have ears they cannot hear. They have mouth they cannot talk. And they have hands that they cannot handle. But our God who created the whole heaven and the whole earth is a mighty God. With him all things are possible. Is a great God of glory and of power and of majesty. Nothing shall be possible unto him. Therefore, we can easily tell him, O oh Lord, you have given me a great promise, a mighty promise, a wonderful promise. O oh Lord, do as thou hast said, he will not disappoint you. In First Kings chapter 8, verse 23. First Kings chapter 8. And we're reading from verse 23. And he said, Lord God of Israel, there is no God like thee. Do you see the experience of all these men of God? All through the Bible, from the very beginning to the end, every one of them confess in trusting the Lord and in having the promises of God being yes and amen in their lives. They all confess, O oh God, we have heard, we have seen, we have known, and you have done great and wonderful things in our lives. And this is our confession. There is no God like you. And he said, Lord God of Israel, there is no God like thee in heaven above, on earth beneath, who keepeth covenant and mercy with thy servants that walk before thee with all their heart. First Chronicles chapter 17. I'm reading from verse 19. First Chronicles chapter 17. Reading from verse 19 and verse 20. Still the same thing. I'm just showing you that all over the Bible, everybody knew. Even Nebuchadnezzar eventually knew there is no God like this God. You don't want Nebuchadnezzar to have more knowledge than you. That idol worshiper, blinded by the God of this world, eventually came to the recognition and the revelation of who God is. You don't want that person, Nebuchadnezzar, to know more than you know. If Nebuchadnezzar realized there's no God like this God, you better realize there's no God like this God. I said there's no God like this God. In might, in power, in holiness, in goodness, in his providence, in his redemption, and in his uh, forgiveness, in his salvation, in his uh, majesty, in his glory. There is no God like this God. Like they believed it, you ought to believe it, you ought to know it, you. And when you get in trouble, when you have any problem, when you have any mountain, when you have any affliction, and when things confront you beyond your power, beyond your strength, you will be able to also say, I know my God will deliver. I know my God will help. I know my God will sustain. I know my God will support me because there is no other God like this God that is great and mighty. It's First Chronicles chapter 17 verse 19. O Lord, for thy servant's sake, and according to thine own heart, hast thou done all this greatness in making known all these great things, O Lord, there is none like thee. That's it again. That's it again. O oh Lord, there is none like thee. Neither is there any God beside thee. According to all that we have heard with our ears. You are hearing the same thing. And that same power will work mightily in your life in Jesus' name. Psalm 113. I'm reading from verse 4. Psalm 113. Psalm 113, reading from verse 4. The Lord is high above all nations, and His glory above the heavens, who is like unto the Lord our God, who dwelleth on high, who humbleth Himself to behold the things that are in the, in the heaven and in the earth. Then it says in verse 7, He raises up the poor out of the dust. He will raise you up. And lifted the needy out of the dung hill, that he may set him with the princes, even with the princes of the people. That promise will be yes and amen in your life. But looking at Isaiah chapter 40, it's telling us he has no comparison. It's 